Hey, what are you doing, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So today I got like super dusty. I was operating the 259, which is open cab, and uh, we were pushing a lot of dirt around. It was a pretty cool little job. So for the rest of this video, we got a bunch of cool stuff we're gonna be showing you guys. I got some new tools. Uh, I got to check out probably the gnarliest motorcycle that I've ever seen in my entire life. I thought for a little bit that I might've been able to ride it, but I was not, and I can't blame the homeowner because I wouldn't let a total stranger ride this motorcycle either. When you guys see this thing, you'll understand why. Uh, we got some stuff we're gonna be doing on the dump trucks. Um, we got this go-kart right here. We did get a new engine for that, so that's kind of exciting. Um, got some new tools. And we got some other stuff we're going to show you guys. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Let's go ahead and roll on into it. Let's go. starts dead stop and nails it and does a burnout up to 135 miles an hour one time. Charging the battery. <laughs> I'll go put some gas in it for you. <laughs> it's a little ride bro. Yeah. So here is the engine that was in it. Here's the one that I just picked up. There are some slight differences. This one has a vertical cylinder, I guess you could say. If you look at the, the Harbor Freight one, it's kind of like on its side. More torque. Oh yeah, more torques. Okay. Yeah. Important things first, out of here. Ooh, wood, ooh, this is a premium. That's we're, like $50. Yeah, we're gonna hold on to that. I got a Harbor Freight uh, log splitter though over the weekend. Yeah. It's got a Subaru motor in it. Oh, why don't you bring it down? You put Royal Purple in this? You know it. Wow. Hey, that's a big gas tank. Hopefully the shaft's right. I don't know, it looks quite a bit bigger. This must have been before the great wood shortage of 2021. Right, here's a moment of truth. Let's see if it works. All right, here we go. Oh yeah, we're in business maybe. Hold on. It is quite a bit taller. Yeah, we got a lot of space. Well, we'll see. I'll throw it in there right now. Is that how you held your first child? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, no, it's not. <laughs> 
my fingers. <laughs> Ping. Oh, no. <laughs> Houston, we have a problem. Cut and weld. That's about let's put the shock back in or take it out, one or the other. All right, so we're running into some minor issues here. This engine is a little bit taller and a little bit longer than its predecessor, but we need the more power. Because I'm a fatty. What we're gonna do, we're gonna cut these off right here, and we're gonna try and bend this bar up to here, and then we'll re-weld it. cut off these rear braces back here we're gonna try and squish this up but we don't really have any guarantees that when we squeeze these together that it's not gonna pull this top half down so I'm gonna go grab the 272 we're gonna stick the forks in here rest it on top and then we're gonna push up on this with a jack and hopefully that does the trick so I'm gonna grab the 272 be right back all right this is where we get technical Perfect. Do you want to heat them up at all or no? Nah, we're not that technical. Just send it. All we want is that triangulation. How's that look? That's good. Yeah, that's probably good. Stop. All right, so we just tried hooking the shock up and it still doesn't reach and it's sitting on top of the engine here. So basically what that means is this is gonna go, this is gonna go, all of those are gonna go, and then we're gonna have to do some fabrication. Well, we can leave this one. We might as well get rid of it though if we're gonna be building all new. All right. I don't know. I don't know if this wheel will last, we'll see. So I'm just not quite comfortable with how close that is. You guys can see like, it just barely has like a finger length. And when you go down like this, it just barely clears. So when we get the big boys like myself or, or John driving this thing around, it could get a little bit hairy and uh, I'm not comfortable with like a half inch of clearance. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna cut this and we're gonna rebuild this cage because it got bent and jacked up anyways. So it needs some work, and this steel all kind of sucks anyway. So tomorrow or another day sometime this week, I'm gonna cut this. I'll get the oil changed in my truck, and I'll get this thing pulled in there so we can actually have some room to work on it. And then uh, I'm thinking by Saturday. All right guys, so we're about done for the night. We're gonna wrap this thing up. It's obviously getting dark, and we got some work to do tomorrow. But um, this thing pretty much fits. You know, we pretty much exonate everything that you could exonate other than this part right here, which we're probably gonna get rid of anyways. But we're wondering if there's like any substantial horsepower gains if you like straight pipe this or if they make turbo kits or Heck yeah. I don't know. We're going to start looking to see what high performance stuff we can get in this, even though it's for my kids. <laughs> right, right. Kids. Yeah, yeah, kids. But there's always a governor screw. All right. So for this next part of the video, guys, sometimes I just can't catch a break. This truck right here, this one's the dream machine. Never give me one problem. This one right here has had its ups and downs. This one was in the shop about two weeks ago, getting the death level sensor replaced. Ran great. And then, pff, this happened. Rear wheel seal, pff, pretty much is garbage. So I picked up some new ones of those today. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take this shaft out so you guys can see how much bigger the shaft on this thing is compared to like, let's say the one on Big Stinky. Um, it's incredible how much larger they are, but it still blows my mind that something you know, about that big can move this whole truck when it's full of dirt. Hey, what's up, tractor boy? Hey. You gonna help us work on the trucks? Yeah. All right. Let's open this thing up. I got my custom catch pan just in case. So I have one of the shafts that I pulled out of the axle, Big Stinky, just to show you guys the sheer size difference between an axle like that 
and an axle like that. The size difference is huge because this is no slouch of an axle. So this is the shaft out of the Dana 70 HD. You can see my thumb there for reference. It's a pretty good size shaft. So it's got eight bolts that connect it. We're gonna go ahead and set this guy right here. This one's a little bit heavier, but I can still kind of pick it up one-handed. We're gonna set it down. Okay. So there's my thumb next to this, and we're gonna go ahead and roll it over next to the one out of the Dodge. You can see how much longer it is, how much bigger that flange is. Still blows my mind that this thing can move that truck when it's fully loaded with dirt. So anyhow, I did get a new gasket for it. We're gonna go ahead and put it back together. Also, we try as hard as we can to do that Made in America thing around here. Sometimes my budget prohibits me from doing that with tools, but as far as like parts for trucks go, I try to do it like as American as I can because they usually are way better and they usually do end up lasting longer. All right, hopefully this is the right one. Gentle shmi. <laughs> So there's the new seal. Try and keep this as clean as you possibly can because everybody knows contaminants are bad. Alright, now one thing that I do like to use when I'm putting stuff back together like this, um, I like to use this stuff, engine assembly lube. Now this isn't just for engines. If you look on the back it says recommended for engine, transmission, and differential assembly. Use on camshaft bearings and lobes, crankshafts, engine bearings, gears, lifters, push rods, valve stems, and all areas of rotational or sliding metal to metal contact. And if you guys notice it says extreme pressure anti-seize. So guess what guys, there's a lot of pressure right there. So I'm gonna put this on there and then we'll slide it in. Alrighty, in she goes. Bingo. So there may be some discrepancies on why this actually happened, but I'm not gonna throw anyone under the bus. That's not how I roll. But we are missing a couple of the washers that are supposed to be on there. So we got some replacement ones, but they are slightly a different size. So I'll show you guys what I mean. All right, so here's the one that came from the factory. Then here's the one that we bought to replace it. So let's see if they both fit. So this fits on here. I'm hoping that the wheel cover still is able to snap over it. All right, so the last part is really just tightening it down and torquing the nuts down to spec. Now the nuts that come off of this, this is an old one, are nylocks. Uh, you guys can see the nylon right there that's got the thread cut into it. A new nut does not have those threads. And basically when you thread it on, it locks it into place. And once you take it off, it kind of defeats the purpose. So pick up some new nuts while you're out. It's not that expensive. And uh, just do the job right. So if you look really, really close, uh, you guys probably won't be able to see it on the camera, but it did pucker a little bit right here because of that larger washer. And let me feel on the bottom. Mm. Yep, puckered a little bit down there too. But regardless, we're done with this one. I gotta pull it out of the way so I can get my GMC in here and do some service on that. It needs oil change. All right, so one of my favorite things about the 389 is the gauge cluster and the dash. It looks super cool. It looks good during the day, but it looks even better at night. So here we go. That's one thing checked off my maintenance list. So I got the Denali pulled in here, but instead of me showing you guys me trying to figure out what's wrong with the transmission, I'm gonna show you guys something a little bit more interesting. I'm gonna show you guys some new tools. All right, so here's a fun fact about me, guys. Uh, I am pretty mechanically inclined. Um, I like to fix a lot of my own stuff. I love working on trucks. You know, I take my sweet time doing it, but when I do something, I try to do it really cool. Um, I had that Cummins powered K30, which I still love, still have it. Don't really drive it so much, but um, it is cool to start up every once in a while, but one of my true passions, um, and I wish I got to do this one a little bit more, but it's really hard to find time to do it. I love carpentry. Um, I like to make stuff out of wood. And so from time to time, I try to build something really cool. Um, like I did the cabinets in my kitchen and those look like old barn doors and, and that turned out pretty cool. And not to get all touchy feely, I'm not trying to tug on your guys' heartstrings, but you know, my dad passed away like 10 years ago and with the help of a family friend who lived down the street who has a much nicer wood shop than I had, um, he helped me build my dad's casket. And to this day, that's probably one of the nicest things that I've built. So having said that, um, 
I picked up a big belt sander today. I've had handheld belt sanders. Uh, I've had the orbital sanders, the square vibrating sanders, all that stuff. But I've never had a big belt sander. And I didn't feel like spending a lot of money on one. So my brother John, he went to Old Harbor Freight and he picked up the central machinery belt sander. So we're going to open it up for you guys. And we're going to see how it actually works. And I'm going to show you guys what we're going to start making. I'm actually considering selling these. Let's see how much of this I can do one-handed. This thing should work. Some assembly required. Mm -hmm. Guide. Assuming that's what the sandpaper sticks to. More stuff. And I think that's it. All right, so here it is. There was some assembly required, but I didn't even look at the instructions. I just looked at the box. I was able to piece it together, but don't be like me. But regardless, we're gonna plug this thing in. We're gonna see how it actually works. All right, let's see if the belt is centered. <laughs> oh, great product. What's going on here? All right, so the first one was a swing and a miss. This thing was positioned a little bit too low. So let's see if it works now. It's even centered, so let's uh, let's start sanding. Here goes poster number one. All right, so we got two of these things cut out. I'm gonna go ahead and personalize these for them because they were the winners of the intro mini game giveaway thing that I do. So we're gonna go ahead and try and carve these up, see what it actually turns out like. I've never really done anything like this. Uh, I've never hand carved anything. All right, so here's my swanky wood carving set. And here are my two coasters. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put the screws in this video. We just got done getting diesel and we just went on a job walk to go look at doing some asphalt work. But before I end it, I wanna give a big thanks to Mr. Tim and Mr. Zach. These are their customized coasters. They're super basic. It might look like a kindergartner made them, but it was fun. This was my first batch. I am gonna start making like really cool coasters because we just ordered a laser engraver. So I'm super stoked on that. It'll probably be in one of the videos to follow, but appreciate you guys for taking time to watch. If you do me a huge solid, like, subscribe, hit that notification button, share this video with your amigos, all that good stuff, and we will see you guys next time.